Hey friends, thanks for joining me today. My name is Roger Lopez, part of the technical marketing team at Red Hat. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about event-driven Ansible with Red Hat OpenShift. If you didn't check out the earlier video that I made with regards to event-driven Ansible with Red Hat OpenShift and how to do volume snapshots, check out the description below. I'm gonna have a link for you there. But for today, our video is gonna be focused on SSL management using event-driven Ansible with Red Hat OpenShift. So imagine the scenario where you have these applications that are being created within your Red Hat OpenShift and they have, let's say, a not a valid certificate or they're using HTTP protocol and you want them to actually have a valid certificate anytime a new application is created. Well, event-driven Ansible can help you do this. So one of the things I'm gonna showcase in this demo is how you can integrate event-driven Ansible with Red Hat OpenShift for your different applications that are running within Red Hat OpenShift and how you can actually always have a valid proper certificate that is signed and ready to go. So let's get started. Let me demo this now. All right, so let's check out the demo over here that we have. So effectively what we're gonna be doing now is configuring SSL management with your Ansible rulebooks. So in this particular exercise, we're gonna take create an Ansible rulebook that's gonna actually kick off an Ansible job within our automation controller. And it's going to happen every time a new route is being created within our OpenShift application. So we're gonna be using an application called Rocket Chat. When this application is deployed, what's gonna end up happening, it's going to deploy a route. When this route gets created, we're going to have a playbook that's gonna actually create us a valid certificate using the Let's Encrypt certificate. So this is a nice way for, let's say you have any developers that are creating applications, they don't have to worry about keeping up with our properly signed certificates for, for security reasons, they're actually going to inherit them. So let's kind of get started on what that looks like. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to log in to our Bastion host here, which is gonna be able to access our OpenShift environment as well as our Ansible uh, automation platform environment. So to kind of give you a, a recap here, here we have a Ansible automation platform that's deployed on Red Hat OpenShift. We have these different exercises. The one we're gonna focus on is OpenShift exercise two, which is our, gonna be our SSL management demo. We have our overview, which is our Red Hat OpenShift environment. And here I have an image of the Ansible uh, OpenShift playbook that we're gonna be using to create our Red Hat certificate. And I'll kind of go over that in just a little bit. So to kind of get us kicked off and started, the first thing we wanna do is go in and log into our particular environment. So in this particular case, I am going to log in into our, our lab and I'm gonna provide the password. And we're gonna do the same thing for this bottom one over here. We're gonna log in as well. So we have two terminals accessing the same environment. So now that we've done that, uh, we wanna, let's go over the playbook and what's essentially happening, right? So effectively this playbook is designed to configure a Let's Encrypt certificate, which is gonna be applied to all our applications that are leveraging a Red Hat OpenShift. And it's gonna use the capabilities of our cert manager operator as well as the cert utils operator. And this is gonna allow us to actually inject the SSL sign certificate to all of our applications. So the breakdown of our particular playbook is we're gonna define some variables. We're, the first task you're gonna see is the creation of a playbook using the Kubernetes.core K8 module, which is an issuer uh, that's gonna use the cert manager resources responsible for actually creating the cert certificate. And then we're gonna create the certificate itself. And finally, we're gonna patch that route with the certificate and the proper annotations. So to kind of show you what that looks like, here is an example of that exact playbook um, where here you have the different variables that are being assigned. The first task is creating the issuer, as I uh, mentioned, and it's properly using that Kubernetes Core K8 module. It's gonna be using the cert manager operator and it's gonna allow us to use that Let's Encrypt certificate. So we're gonna create the issuer, then we're gonna go off and create the certificate. And then we're gonna patch that route with the cert manager annotations. And what this is going to do is that whenever an application is created, let's say it was using an HTTP protocol, not HTTPS, 
when the application sees that this route has been created and not with the proper protocol, it's actually going to go properly patch it with a valid certificate that we have enabled. So to kind of get us started, let's go off and do some of these pieces. So one of the first things we need to do is we're going to create a rule book. So what is a rule book? A rule book is basically a set up of three things. One is the source, the rules, and then actions. The sources are event effect effectively uh, what allows us to communicate in this case with our OpenShift cluster. And it's looking for specific events related to Kubernetes or Red Hat OpenShift. The rules are essentially if conditionals that if some event happens, we're going to take an action. And the action that we're going to be taking is running a job template. And in this example, you have the example job template, but we're going to change that to use the job template that we have within our Ansible automation platform that we've already uh, pre-populated called the EDA OpenShift exercise two. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to go off and copy this. And we're going to go to the lab location that we have. So home lab, user, uh, demos, EDA, OCP, exercise two. And we're going to go off and create this exercise to rulebook.yaml. And when we do this, we're going to paste it in. And essentially what we want to do is we want to update these sources, what type of resource we're looking for and the different rules and actions with the proper information. And to save some time, what I'm going to do is I already have this already created. So I'm going to copy the solution into this exercise rule book that I just created. So if we look at that exercise two rule book, you can see here that we're going to be listening for routes and let's fix that up here because we got to spell it correctly. Listening for routes. We're going to be using a specific um, plugin for event driven Ansible called the Sabre 1041 EDA Kubernetes uh, source. And effectively, this is one that our one of our colleagues here created that lets you listen to different events happening within a OpenShift cluster or a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we're actually going to have a proper community plugin once uh, Ansible Automation Platform 2.4 is released. So in this particular case, we're using this to look up kind routes when a condition of event type is added, meaning a route has been added, what we want to do is take an action. And this particular action is running the EDA OpenShift exercises to a job template. So what we want to do now is we want to start running this particular job template. Um, and in order to run the rule book, we want to make sure um, that you have Ansible Rulebook installed. And you could install Ansible Rulebook, or you can take advantage of a container that has all the pieces required, all the dependencies required to run Ansible Rulebook, Rulebook, which I already have. So in this particular case, if we do Podman images, you can actually see that I have this um, already image created, and I'm going to just take advantage of it by starting it up and running. So here I'm going to run Podman, and now I'm within that container that has the Ansible rulebook uh, CLI. So within that rulebook, I'm also going to run a particular setup file. So in my directory of, of, of my environment, and one second. So now I'm going to run this particular So now I'm going to run this particular command and this is going to run that container image that has Ansible rulebook already installed for me. When I do that, one of the things I want to do now is run this particular setup.sh file that I have. And what this is going to do is it's going to install certain pip packages that I need, like Kubernetes requests. It's going to install that Sabre 1041 EDA collection that I need. And it's also going to add like OC client and kubectl as well uh, within there for me. And these are all things that I need in order to properly run this demo. That's why I had it. There's always the option of embedding these things and creating your container image with them. But in my case, I didn't have that already. So now that I'm in the container image and I have that all pre-installed and ready to go, I want to log into my OpenShift cluster. So I'm going to log into my OpenShift cluster. And when I log in, 
I'm gonna go in and change to the mount exercise to location. So I'm in here. And what I wanna do now is I wanna run my Ansible rulebook with my Ansible Automation Controller credentials. And this is going to essentially say, I am running this rulebook that's looking for a specific event. The specific event that it's looking for is to make sure that when a application is created that contains a route, it's going to update it and ensure it has a properly signed certificate for us. So when we do that, we're gonna click here. We're gonna run this command. Now that it's running, the Ansible rulebook it is waiting and watching and listening for this event to happen. So what we wanna do now is we wanna create this Rocket Chat app. So this Rocket Chat app is actually just an application that people use to chat. Um, we're not using it for the purpose of chatting, we're just using it as an example of what we're installing. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna go to our Bastion host, which we're already at. We are going to make sure that we are logged in to our OpenShift cluster within this session. I'm actually in the project Rocket Chat already, but there's actually no application installed. And we can easily verify that by going, for example, to routes on the Rocket Chat, you see that there's there's no routes defined um, and there's no services defined. So there's no application installed here, but this um, project was already pre-created by me or the specific namespace. So now when we go into this location, of our exercise two, we now have these pieces. And if that project rocket chat didn't already exist, I would go off and create it, but actually I'm gonna to switch to it. So project rocket chat. Now I'm, over, I'm already on that project, so perfect. And now what I wanna do is I wanna take advantage of creating the application. So if I go off and create this application and I immediately go into my OpenShift cluster, if I notice in the routes, you'll see that it says HTTP. So that, that link right there says HTTP, right? So one of the things you'll notice when I clicked on the link, the app is not running, and you'll see this big not secure section, right? So this is telling you, hey, the application for one is not running, and also the route to get to it is not secure. It's not a secure site. So if we go ahead and let's say close this out, and we're looking now for a, our, our application. If we go now to our jobs, we can see that our EDA OpenShift Exercise 2 actually went off and created the issuer, created the particular certificate, and more importantly, it patched the route. So now if we go back to our, our route section within our Red Hat OpenShift and we click on update, we notice now it actually no longer says HTTPS, but now it actually says, uh, it no longer says HTTP, excuse me, it now says HTTPS, so it's actually using a proper valid certificate. So if we go off and click on that link now and we open it, we actually now can properly see that we have a certificate that is now of connection secure, right? So it actually went in and created a proper, proper certificate for us while it was actually deploying the application, which we can now see the application is up and running and ready for us to actually go off and use and set up. And with that, that's the demo. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's very important to realize that, think about what we just did. We were able to take the HTTP non-secure application and with the help of event-driven Ansible, we were actually able to watch for a particular event, in this particular case, a route, and actually update that route with our valid certificate all on the fly, right? We didn't have to do anything. We essentially, all we have to do is wait, make sure we were watching for the event. And then our applications had this proper proper certificate set up for them based on the fact that we're using EDA with Red Hat OpenShift. Hope you enjoyed the demo and thanks again.